Hello, hello, hello. We are midway through week 11. Week 11 is taking God at his word. And so I wanted to follow up with you all just to check in and see how you're doing. I'm going to be making some phone calls after the holiday to see how you're making out with your reading. I hope you are growing and learning as much as you um, expect to, or in, in even more than that, by leaps and bounds. I am having a wonderful time um, exploring my faith, putting my faith to the test. Um, I've been on this journey of spirituality for almost 30 years. And it's time for me to act as if I am not on milk. It is time for me to be at the meat eating stage and to show the world my truth, my faith, and what it has instilled in me, how it has grown me, how it has matured me, how it has changed and transformed me. And you have that in you too. There are many of you that are taking this journey with me that have been a Christian for more than 10 years, more than 15 years. And so what I'd like to say to you is Take what you know and start using it, start applying it. These are principles for us to succeed in life with. Um, these are tools for us to use for whenever we're fearful, whenever we're faced with adversity, whenever we get to where our back is up against the wall and we're not sure what we need to do. And, and, and we know at this point that we can't walk this journey alone. We have to have those super soul sisters or those super soul brothers in our circles to kind of help spur us on or to hold our arms up whenever we feel weakened and not um, empowered. So I kind of wanted to start off to say that, but boy, oh boy, taking God at his word in the context of understanding how much authority Jesus has, how much authority God has, and then how much authority God gives us whenever we dedicate our lives to him, whenever we commit our ways to him. And um, isn't it great to be known as one who has authority? But we have to be careful because when we're in a position of holding authority or when we're in a position of being known as one who has authority, Satan can easily weasel his way into our hearts and into our minds and into that flesh and make us prideful and make us arrogant. And what we don't want to become is self-righteous. Oh, I have been um, guilty of being self-righteous or exuding examples of self-righteousness without even realizing that that's what I was doing. You know, um, a way to gauge if you're being self-righteous is, well, I read my Bible, did you? Um, what, uh, just assuming and making assumptions that people are doing the wrong things and making an assumption that people aren't doing the right things. That's self-righteousness, y'all. You know, allow a person to come to you and tell you that they're not doing good, that they're not feeling well, that they need help, that they need assistance from you. And then when that happens, then you give them your expertise, you give them your love, you give them your knowledge, you give them your wisdom to help them overcome those adversities, those spiritual adversities, so that they can move forward on their journey and in their walk. So um, I gave you guys some things to ponder. Number one, God doesn't lie. He's not an idle chit chatter. His conversations matter. And a very important thing, he makes you a better communicator. Have you ever been the type of communicator to where you know what it is that you want to say, you have it in your head, you have it in your mind, you have it in your heart, but you don't know how to express it. You may feel like you're at a loss for words. Well, you know what? Start having more conversations with your maker and not just in your head, have verbal 
conversations. I don't care if you and he are in the same, are, if, if only you and him are in the same room and no one else, that it appears as though you're talking to yourself. Have more conversations with God so that you can lessen the situations that you feel that you are at a loss for words. I'm always feeling like I'm at a loss for words. Practice it, prepare, do your research, do your research. If you know you're gonna meet with someone and you know what it is that you're gonna talk about, ponder and think about the things that may come up in the conversation. Prepare yourself on how you are going to respond. That will lessen the chances that you will be at a loss for words. God is a great communicator and he can make you a great communicator as well. You know, the Roman centurion was a man of high leadership. He had a high position um, in, his, in his work and in, in his career. Here in Luke chapter seven, verse eight, he talks about how, how the, um, his, his, his subordinates up under him respond whenever he speaks to them and with them. I tell this one, go and they go. I tell this one, come and they come. I say to my servant, do this and they do it. So he understood that in his subor sub subordinates up under him understood leadership authority that they could take him at his word, okay? So he knew that if he were to ever encounter Jesus, if he had a chance to speak with Jesus and he would ask Jesus to heal his daughter, and if Jesus would just say the word, he could take Jesus at his word as one who holds authority to heal. Listen, how can you start to transition and mature in your spiritual walk, in your spiritual walk so that people can understand that you are one of authority your word can be trusted because it's tailored wrapped up shaped up tangled up into god's word and you can be sure to administer that word to someone and immediately if they receive it that they will receive that healing you're in that position this chapter teaches you on taking God at his word can also help you to become a great communicator and a great believer by faith so that you can be able to create change in and around your family in your community. Let's do this. This is week 11. We have one more week of understanding what faith is and then week 13, we're going to be talking about what faith does. I'm excited about that, too. So I'll see you guys. I know this Sunday is um, Fourth of July weekend, and there is a lot going on this Fourth uh, of July Sunday. So I am going to pray that I am home by 6 o'clock so that I can do my regularly scheduled Zoom meeting. And... Um, for those of you all who will join me, can't wait to see you. Um, and uh, we're just going to have a good time. Okay. So I will check in with you later. Love you guys. Bye-bye.